I hope that we are streaming here on Twitch for this Arkwright, the card game, how to play. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat throughout. Uh, my name is Amanda. I work with Game Brewer, which is a Belgian game company, but I am based in Seattle, so I'm doing this kind of for a Western Hemisphere audience today and some late night owls over there in Europe and maybe some early risers in Asia. And uh, hopefully I have a few of you joining me along the way. I'm going to try to make this pretty quick, but it's a pretty dense a little card game. Uh, it should take probably about half an hour to 45 minutes to go over all the details. Uh, if you are familiar with Arkwright the card game, that's great. But I'm not going to go over any of the basics of the original game by uh, Stefan Ristos. So I'm just going to go over the new card game that we have here. There are quite a few similarities, but there are definitely some uh, differences. And if you're not familiar with the original, do just fine. You'll follow right along. I'm going to assume you don't know anything about the other older board game. Now, we did call this a card game, and we've had a few people comment that it looks a little bit more than a card game, but <laughs> that is true. There's actually quite a few board elements on here, so it's uh, a little bit closer to things like uh, Imperial Settlers or Deus that are board games that use a lot of cards, uh, but we wanted to differentiate it from the original game Arkwright, and instead of just calling it the Arkwright slightly streamed version that utilizes a lot more cards, we went ahead and uh, just called it Arkwright the card game. And as you can see, a lot of the board components are in fact instead taken up by cards. So I'm going to give kind of a brief overview that are going to go over the components of the game, and then I'll go into some of the details and uh, hopefully if you have any questions, we can uh, go from there. All right, so this is just a high overview here. We're going to get a closer look, hopefully clearing up some of what you can see here. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Tabletopia, but it has been amazing for us here during uh, COVID and the pandemic. Since I have yet to even play this game in person with other people here in Seattle, I've been able to play online with friends uh, around the world, which has been very helpful in getting uh, this game promoted now that it is on Kickstarter. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, first, at kind of what you're given for your initial uh, player components. Hopefully some of this can be seen. We've got a player board, we've got some factories, we've got office cards, worker cards, and you've got your own deck of cards here below, and a shipping card as well. The general uh, idea of this game is you are trying to develop a better business, be a better entrepreneur than your fellow competitors. You're going to be opening factories that uh, specialize in different goods. You have four available to you. You start the game with kind of a random assortment, not random, but determined by player count, different types of factories. We've got a, a bread factory and cutlery factory as the starting factories here for the blue player. If we look at uh, let's see, maybe the purple player, they have bread and lamps uh, factories to start them out. So there's some different factories that each player will be starting with. But you will um, build out your factories. They come with office cards. You'll be uh, able to add up to two worker cards to any given factory. And those cards in your hand correspond directly with the type of factory. And um, in building up those factories, you'll be able to change the appeal uh, that those have with the marketplace. And here on the game market board, uh, that will affect your colored cube, will move up on this track and um, allow you to sell some goods uh, at the end of each round. But again, just overview, I'll get into some details shortly. But you build your factories to staff them with workers, to drive up the appeal, increasing the value, hopefully being able to sell the goods to make some money to buy the shares that you can then uh, use to, to win the game. Let's go back over here to the purple player. And those are these tracks here. So this is your share values. Uh, this is the number of shares that you are holding. At the end of the game, you're going to multiply those two numbers together, and the person with the highest uh, value is going to win the game. The player board also is where you can keep some of other counting things, such as the loans you've taken from the bank, the number of ships you've used to sail, which I'll come back to, and these special developments that allow you to do things here on your factories better and faster when you choose to take those actions. And at the start of the game, they all start out pretty basic, but you'll be able to improve them as the game goes on. All right, I don't have any questions yet. Looking good. 
So we build our factories, we staff our factories with workers, we sell our goods against the game market to improve our shareholdings, and we do this uh, through several different decades. Let me see here. Oh. <laughs> now, there we go. Uh, we're going to go through three different decades in the game. We're going to sell bread, clothing, cutlery, and lamps in that order in each of those decades. Doing so uh, will complete one full game. The uh, Last little bit of overview is, um, before I go into specifics, you getting dizzy yet? <laughs> uh, our development cards. So every player is gonna start with uh, one development card. These development cards give them special action uh, that they can have uh, that will help them throughout the game. These can uh, also, you can have other ones of these uh, in the game. And even here on your board determines how many different uh, ones you can hold at any one given time. So you start the game with one, you're allowed to take one more, and you could increase that so you could hold up to four of those. And they are, let me see here, I think I saved. Nope. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, I love these camera things if I can remember what numbers. The different uh, cards that you can add here on your board. And there are a whole bunch of these. Again, I'll go over details, but those are the other main uh, card components of our Guide the Card game. All right, so what does uh, a single player hand look like? Let's see here, I've got green player uh, pulled out for you. This one, I've actually taken all the cards that you could hold in your hand. Um, of course, on a table, it'd be very easy just to flip through this in front of you. In Tabletopia, you could also uh, drag and add them to, to your hand. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them out on the table. And, um, now that's going to bother me. <laughs> But we'll leave it. Um, so we can go over what all the different cards are in your hand and the different actions. So there is a little cheat sheet that you'll have here. And we have definitely tried to make it so that you do not have to have uh, any language uh, dependency after you read the rule book. And this is a double sided card. Here we go. Uh, for the start of the game, uh, I will go over what all these actions are. But you are going to um, be able to first in the first part of your turn, choose one of these five actions. Numbers six and seven are for the advanced mode of play, which I won't really be covering here today, but it does allow you to uh, kind of maximize uh, the strategies that you're having in a game and make it a little more complex for experienced players. But the first few times you play, you're definitely gonna wanna stick with these first few actions. So uh, in the first round of the first decade, you're going to choose one of these actions to do, which I will now go over. Then you're going to adjust some of what your uh, factory is going to produce this round according to what you have placed next to that factory and how you've upgraded it and developed it uh, versus what is out on the market game board and then you're going to choose one development that you can improve so let's break this down so action um, uh, a1 is going to allow you to either uh, build new factories or upgrade the factories you already have. Now, with the exception of using a special uh, development card, you are um, supposed to only develop uh, upgrade factories when you're in the appropriate decade. So in the first uh, round of the game, you're not going to be able to upgrade. You will be able to build, but you can't change this uh, decade one factory into a decade two factory until you're in actually decade two. You can see there the different things. There's worker cards that will also be allowed to flip uh, in subsequent uh, decades. And again, you cannot upgrade those until you've reached the appropriate decade. So in phase one, you would be looking at your card and if you choose this action, you're gonna be building new factories. Now, the way that you build new factories is you just simply choose which ones of your remaining factories and you only have two that you want to build. You can build both of them right then and there. Uh, they will go out uh, into the play area. You will add the appropriate office card that goes, uh, which are these uh, generic office cards. <laughs> You're there. Uh, generic office cards that you would add to uh, your factory when you open it, but you do not add a new worker card. As you can see here, the game does start with a worker's uh, card already added onto some of the factories that are onto the factories that you start the game with, but when you build, you do not add new workers. So you add whatever factory you want, you add the office card, and you place one of your uh, cubes onto the market game board uh, for uh, future uh, 
changing of your appeal. And I will just continue to make you dizzy here with my fabulous Tabletopia skills. <laughs> so there we go. And um, now I would be uh, starting at zero because I haven't done anything with that factory yet. But when it comes time to produce, that will be changing. So to build and upgrade factories, uh, to build, you simply create new ones, adding the appropriate stuff to your table. To upgrade, you flip everything over. Now, when you build factories, that's creating jobs and uh, in this world that we are in here in the Industrial Revolution. And so the demands are going to uh, increase. There's going to be more workers. They're going to have more money. They got stuff to buy. So this is going to actually uh, drop down. Uh, which will be increasing the gap between your value and how much they're asking for uh, when we come to the production phase. Uh, but also, the number, there's more places to be employed, so the workers can demand an increase in their wages. For the first little bit of the game, you're going to stay within this three pound wage value for your workers, but that might sneak up into the four or even five as the game goes on, so it can be expensive when it time, comes time to run the production on your factories. Um, so every time you build new factories, that uh, is when you drop those demand tokens down and move the wage marker up. When you upgrade, you do not do those things. Okay, so let's go back to green here. I think that's number six. No, no, guess again. Number seven? Nope. How about number eight? <laughs> yes, so green is number eight. All right, we are here uh, back with all these cards that are out, so it's kind of handy for me. Uh, okay, so this is 1A. You can build new factories or you can upgrade the ones you have. And this little asterisk lets you know that you move those demand wages and the wages marker over. Adding workers. To add workers, whichever factories you have open, so this would be cutlery and coats, and let's say, I guess we were pretending that we also, uh, uh, let's say we opened a bread one, you're going to um, Uh, you can add workers to any of these that you want, and you can add as many worker cards as you want at any one time. Keeping in mind, you can only uh, change some of the workers into machines later on, but you can never remove a worker card from a factory, and we did kind of briefly glance at the wages token there, so it is expensive to employ workers. But in order to do so, you would just find the matching cards, and you can add as many workers in the appropriate decade as you want. So this one is uh, decade one. And this is a little Tabletopia uh, fun that I'm sure most of you are better at than I, but <laughs> they want to get tucked underneath that main factory card, which can be a little tricky here. In person, it'd be super easy. And you can add your workers uh, with the appropriate uh, side flipped over. I think this is actually like so. We have not built any machines yet, so you want to make sure you're in the right did I move this earlier? It's possible, yes. Okay. Um, when I was setting up. Okay, so we have the workers. To do so, you just add as many workers as you want. The little asterisk there is letting you know for this one, the demand uh, markers also go down and the wages tokens uh, continues to move to the right. So building factories and adding workers to your factory, uh, you don't want to do too many times in the game um, because it will continue to drive up those wages. But, I mean, of course, you need workers to operate your factories. So, choose wisely. Okay, now we have uh, the third action that's available to you. Is Instead, you can turn some of those workers into machines. Uh, I'm sure you give them a nice severance package and uh, a little bonus vacation, and then you just replace their persons with a machine. <laughs> the reason you want to do this is uh, because machines are only ever going to cost you one. If you have uh, this uh, marker going up whenever you're hiring workers and building factories, note this does not change. It stays at one. So upgrading your workers into machines, sort of uh, mechanizing your factories, it's going to be um, a good, good way to uh, do better in this game. 
And that action uh, is determined instead, not just uh, openly, but more on your player board here. So if you can see here, that's one of your developments. You start the game being allowed to do uh, two machine upgrades. So if you choose this action before you choose to upgrade this little section, you'd be able to uh, add two machines to any one or two factories. Could both be on the same one. One could be on one, one could be on another factory. Uh, your choice, but only a maximum of two. If you have managed to choose this as an upgrade, you might be able to do three in one action or as many as four in one action. So if you move that up early in the game, it's great because every time you choose it, you'd be able to kind of convert a lot of your workers into machines. There's a limit to that. They don't, it's not never ending, um, but it's good to, to upgrade your workers uh, that way. Then we get to quality and distribution. So we have this little uh, gloved hand here. He's a quality inspector. He's kind of checking the the nuts and bolts and seams on those coats and the oils in that lamp and determining that's a much better quality than your competitors or the distribution which is kind of this little bullhorn symbol it's sort of like the trucks that drive your your goods out to the different shops and you can choose to uh, uh, place upgrades from your uh, deck of cards onto your different factories now these are both determined uh, again here on your player board both the quality um, improvement and the distribution improvement. Note, when choosing that action, you have to choose between quality or distribution. You can never add both quality and distribution uh, on a turn. So if uh, your marker's here and you're choosing quality, you'll be adding one quality strength this action. That's on these cards. Again, there are things that can be flipped and rotated and um, it'll get tucked under uh, the office side of your card. And so if I was going to improve this here, and you're watching me miraculously pull this card up, <laughs> tucking everything in order under a card, uh, let's say I had two, and I could add this right on the two, all in this one factory. If I had the ability to add two quality to a factory, I could have split that up and put one on my cutlery and one on my bread, but I could also place both of that uh, quality onto that one factory as I did. Note that it changes the appeal of your factory because they're uh, quality goods and um, with your quality uh, and the appeal uh, is something you want. Appe quality will never go away. Now distribution, you'll note here on your player board, is easier to improve faster. So you might even get up to doing four in one turn. Uh, but at the end of each round, there's a possibility that... Uh, if you have used that distribution in that factory that you've produced, you actually have to lose one. So if you'd already built it all the way up to four, it produced this round. Um, you have to pay for those distribution trucks, and so it's actually going to decrease down to a value of uh, three. Oh, it's sideways. Let me turn. Oh, it's all turn our heads <laughs> sideways. So you'd have three distribution at the end of each round. But that's uh, we shown on your card to remind you that those are are decreased only in the round in which that factory produces. If it has distribution, it goes down by one. Quality never decreases. Okay, so we're almost through all the actions. The other one, last one uh, for our basic game here is the stock exchange. And the stock exchange is what allows you to buy stocks, take loans, and uh, get back the ships you've maybe sent out, which I haven't even talked about, but this is how you can recover them. The stock exchange has uh, first the ability to buy uh, stock with uh, whatever your current stock value is. So the earlier in the game you do it, the cheaper they are, which is great, except you need your money to be putting down uh, the cost that it will take when you produce in your factories. But if my value is sitting here, and let's say I'm there, and I want to buy uh, a share by choosing the stock market action, I would have to pay 16 per share. If I want to buy three, that's fine. You can buy as many as you can afford. Uh, your money is kept here on the, I think I put it on this. Yes, here on this track. You start the game with 50. So if you wanted to buy $32 worth of shares, that would be uh, A-OK. -okay. And you would uh, uh, be able to buy them moving down your marker, but now you have less money. All right, so let's go back to the green player here. Um, 
Another improvement that you can do for one of your development tracks is make that purchasing of those shares better. If you have, it starts out just one to one. If you're here, you can have one of those shares at a half price discount uh, every time you choose this action. So if you buy three shares, one of them instead of being 16 will actually only cost you eight. If you buy the other two, it'd still be uh, the full price for those. If you have upgraded yet again, you can each time you choose the stock exchange and the buy shares uh, action, you'll get two of those shares at half rounded up. All right, that's covered almost everything here on your uh, player board for the developments, which is good because most of them are used here in the um, first uh, phase of your turn. Um, I'll come back to that one. The uh, next thing that you do is uh, whichever factory will be selling and producing this round, which is determined again by that round marker here. Um, uh, so first round's bread, and then it's uh, coats, then it's cutlery, and then it's lamps in that order. So if you are producing bread this round, meaning you have a bread factory, you will be selling goods to the home market. Green does oh, I, I made green a bread factory. You get to determine what you want that uh, appeal value to be. Now this is sort of its own little game and kind of the main interaction of between all the players because you're going to be moving this market freely, uh, your marker freely. And the top value is how much money you'll be getting for each of the breads you'll be selling. So here we are selling three breads at a value of two a piece, so you'd be getting six dollars. The appeal value, oh, sad tabletopia. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, the appeal value, which is what what is below and on your office cards, plus your distribution and your quality, you add those up, so you would have uh, appeal of two plus four plus two, so you'd have an appeal of eight. So you'd go look at the uh, and you can choose to flip those cards if you want, uh, rotating them around, um, as long as you're not changing the, 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 like if you have two quality, as long as you stay on two quality, there's another side, which I'll go back and show you, that has an improvement to the, the value, the money costs. Let's say you wanted uh, eight to be your appeal for the bread. And we come back here to the game uh, market, market board, and you're going to move up having an appeal of eight. This is probably not something you would do in the game, but for the sake of this, we'll take a look. I have a great appeal here early in the game. Um, and then you count how many of these little black uh, markers that you have passed. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is how many spaces the demand token is going to go up. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. It moves it into this next category zone here. It moves a little bit slower than the player markers, but it has jumped up there. And I know that I will be able to sell eight minus one, so seven reds. I have three. But maybe I'm thinking all other players are going to go there, and for everyone that they move up, this is also going to creep closer and closer to where we are. And I really want to sell all three of those breads, so I've tried to create a very wide margin here. Um, so if the other players moving up also causes it to move all those steps up, uh, eight minus four, I'd still be able to sell my bread uh, fully to the home market. So that is. Um, what happens there on your turn. Other players are going to do the same thing on the ends of their turns. And uh, before we go to the selling production phase, uh, you get to see here, but you can no longer adjust uh, what you've done with your, your market. So it's player order is very important. This is where a lot of the interaction comes from, trying to figure out who's going to do what, looking at what factories they have open, determining if they're going to want to sell there or not. Hmm. I see that there's a slight echo for some. I will see if I can miraculously fix that with my magical computer skills. I, um, do I have any volume now at all? Or have I just killed my volume? Have I? Hello, hello, hello. All right, I think hopefully that will eliminate the echo.
and you can still hear me. Nope, I'm good. Okay, awesome. Hopefully that fixed it. I know all the wizard technical things. Okay, so uh, where were we? Yes, we're selling and we're producing goods and we're making money. Okay, so everybody's gonna do the same thing at the end of their turn. Before you're completely done with your turn, however, there's one more thing before it goes to the next player and that's allowing you to get a, a improve uh, one development or take a development card. You're allowed to hold two development cards uh, as indicated here at the start of the game. Uh, the development cards are going to help give you, uh, I think I kind of mentioned this earlier, it's going to give you uh, benefits throughout the game. If you've upgraded that, you can hold more than uh, two, you can hold up to four. You can never have the same development card twice, and uh, so you can choose to take a new card. If you already have your limit, you can discard one of the cards that you had and keep a new card, or you can choose to upgrade one of these improvements, such as saying, okay, next time add quality, I'm hoping to bump all the way up to that three real soon, even though the, it just repeats itself with the two there. And um, so that is the last part of my turn. So I've taken my one action. I have rearranged the value that I wanted my uh, appeal and my price to be. I promised you I was going to show you the, the other side of this card here. So instead, it's still at the two quality, but it removes some of that uh, appeal. I pointed with my hand like you could see my screen. <laughs> but it removed the appeal here and it added instead a money value to the top of the card, which means that the difference there of your uh, appeal token on the, the game market board wouldn't have gone up to eight, it would only have gone up to six, and then uh, the black marker would not have moved up those last two steps. Uh, and then when you do sell your three breads, if you're allowed to sell all three, you'll be getting a higher value of actually four per loaf of bread. So maybe we'll pretend that that is what green has done. They've taken their development here with their quality improvement and that would end their turn. It would go on to the next player in clockwise order. Once everybody's done that, let's talk about selling goods, which is the back of this card here. Flip that over. We've got, uh, I'll make it bigger for you kind of a step-by-step -step process which looks a little bit daunting but it's actually uh, again because we just want to remove the language dependency there you're going to be uh, selling your goods to the home market which is England uh, Great Britain here we've got uh, the number of goods that you can sell uh, and how much money you're going to make from them and any leftover goods are going to be able to be put in storage and or used on ships which I'll, I'll come back to shortly and then you're gonna have to pay for your factory upkeep your workers and your machines which is a huge part of the cost in the game. And then you're gonna see if your share value will improve and decrease your distribution. So it's a lot of steps, but it's really just kind of that one production action. So you would look at that. Uh, I have three breads to sell here. I'm saying I'm actually at value of six. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I was pretending in my magical world, I'm really here. <laughs> okay, this person's here because they're sad. I don't know how to play board games. <laughs> and this person's here. Okay, so in this scenario, I uh, was very not clever uh, and I have six minus four, that's only two. So I'm only able to sell two of my brads to the home market, which is um, quite sad. No, that's, that's too sad, and I don't believe in depressing examples. So we're going to move this up to seven, and I'm able to sell all three of my goods, uh, which makes me so happy. And I look at my value on, on my factory here, which I said uh, was, um, oops, I've got like a move there. No, those are, those are coats. Bread, there we go. Uh, it's a value of two plus two, four, so I'm going to get... Three times four, I'm gonna get 12 on my money track. I'm so excited to have all this money. And before I am too excited about how much money I have earned, <laughs> I'm going to have to pay for the costs of my factories, which for this uh, player is going to be uh, here on this board. You'll see in the upper right, cost of this factory is eight. That's expensive considering I only just made $12, 12 pounds. My apologies, fellow, fellow Brits, like I'm British. Uh, <laughs> clearly I am not. 
uh, eight pounds to run my factory plus my workers. Uh, I had four and they're still at that value of three. So that's 12 right there. 12 plus eight. I don't have any machines. I guess that's good. Uh, so I actually have to pay 20 pounds. So even though I was super excited about um, all that money I made, uh, I'm going to not only lose the 12, uh, but I'm also going to go backwards another eight pounds. But I have produced on my factory and uh, I produced the uh, at least two goods. So if I, um, if I do that, uh, I'm actually going to be able to increase my stock uh, value by one. The way that you get a second bump during this production phase, and this is kind of, again, player interaction stuff you want to watch out for, is whoever had the highest appeal on this track. So in my earlier example, when I went crazy and I went to eight and I thought that was just way too far, it was actually um, purple uh, ended up going farther than me when I redid my example. <laughs> and um, he uh, is able to, to, to get that second share value on his, uh, I think that was number six. No, that was orange. <laughs> number seven yes oh but they are, they're not doing very good they're still way back here <laughs> they get an extra bump from selling their breads they sold three and uh, they had the highest appeal so they get an extra and that is shown on your player card here under uh, D so if you sell at least two you're gonna get that one bump if you are the highest on the appeal you're gonna get that extra bump now we didn't end up storing any goods, so we didn't need to store or ship, but if you had uh, not been able to sell all your goods to the home market because you had that sadder example, um, you could uh, instead choose to add a store card to one of your factories. And uh, the number of icons here on the side, wow, you're a, that's great, Amanda. <laughs> The number that you have there is the number of goods that you're storing in your factory. So I'd be storing one bread for the future. When it comes time to sell, uh, you can only sell the ones from your storehouse if you have, haven't produced enough in, in your production to, to sell to the home market, but you're still allowed to sell more to the home market or you're able to sell goods from your storehouses to the ships after that point. But instead of storing this good, I could have chosen immediately to ship one of those goods. Now shipping, you start the game with two ships. Oh, again, we're turning our head sideways to see this card. Um, you can choose to sell the goods. Now the selling price is in the top here. It's usually the same cost, I believe, as the upkeep of your factory, but you'll get an immediate eight pounds to add to your bank. It's great. You sell that good, it is not wasted. It's sent off to far reaches, the expanding British empire, and um, you'll get eight pounds. Now that sounds great. Why wouldn't you just wanna do that? Well, because every time you do, you're going to have to add a ship token to your player board here, which is going to decrease the value of your shares at the end of the game for every two ships that you have added. So you start immediately losing one at the end of the game. Boop. And if you have added, uh, if you've sailed three ships throughout the game, you're actually going to lose two of those values instead of one. But that doesn't come into effect until the end of the game. Just when you decide to ship, you must add a token to your game board. Just as you would if you decided to take a loan during the uh, stock exchange action. I didn't really talk about taking loans, so let's go back to that here real quick. In the stock exchange action, not only do you buy uh, first, and I covered that thoroughly, but if you want to take a loan after you buy shares, you're allowed to take a loan and you have an ability to take nine loans. You could take nine loans in one turn if you want. You don't want to do that. But whenever you take a loan, you're going to add a, a loan token to the board and you are going to get the full value of wherever your stock value is. So if it's here, here, you would get 19 pounds uh, for every one of these tokens you decide to take at that point. Now playing this game and not taking any loans um, is possible, but you probably have to take some loans in order to get the cash flow that you need to run the production costs on your factories. And here you can see at the end of the game, you will be losing not the value of the stocks, but the number of stocks that you hold, which is this top column for every single one of those loan markers that you have. So ships make the value decrease, loans make the number increase, 
uh, at the end of the game. But there are things that you might need to do. Shipping will get you some money, cash inflow, but it might decrease that value. Loans are good here in that action phase. And the last part of that action phase is here when I've used this ship during production phase, I'd also have to flip it over and I'd only have one ship left available to me. If I use that ship, it's also just gonna go away until I have taken this as one of my actions in the game. First, choosing to buy uh, shares and then taking loans and then I get to uh, bump my ships back up to the full value of two. Whether I was at zero or one, it goes back to the two. You can uh, skip any one of those that you want or two of those, but you have to do them in that order. So you can't take a loan before you buy shares and you can't flip your ship over before you buy shares. Not that I think that would matter, but you can't. Okay, so now that I have <laughs> almost missed something very important, we are uh, through with uh, production, I believe. If you had any distribution on your factory, you would have to rotate that card down, uh, flipping it back to a lower value. If it was at one, the card has just gone back into your hand. And uh, then we are finished with the bread phase. The start player card then rotates uh, around the table clockwise. We now know that we're gonna be working on the clothing factories. Of course, people can be adding quality distribution, all that to any factor they want, but just keeping in mind at the end of this round, clothing, if you have them, will produce. And uh, you run through the same set of actions for all the different factories. Once you've reached the end of the lamp uh, production phase, you'll have finished the first decade. Now, there are some of the production cards, I haven't really gone over, that you would tap, that uh, you're able to use just once per decade. That means you've used them up, you've turned the card to indicate it's been used. You would be able to flip that card back up, uh, untapping it for availability in the future rounds. You would uh, then also determine who is who's in last place at the moment. Everybody would multiply their shares, number of shares by their share value, and then you would get to, uh, whoever has the lowest gets to take that start card and choose who will be going first in this round and that uh, they want to be thinking ahead to the different production phases and when they want to be selling after somebody so they can adjust their market value to try to get that extra share value or know that they don't have to add anything because they the demand marker will not be moving up anymore if they go last they know they're free to stay where they are without the fear of possibly losing out on uh, being able to sell so those are the things that you keep in mind to kind of keep it tense the different production cards. I'll go over those real quick just to give you an idea of what we've got here. Um, most of them are these uh, single facing cards like the entrepreneur and the workshop and uh, when you take them they're going to go in front of you and usually they're uh, got a uh, usually just one thing this entrepreneur has two it actually for this one you would tap it and once per round you would be able to um, uh, if you're tied on that appeal uh, track here so if it had been like this and I had this card I could have chosen to to tap the card and break that tie in my favor and I get that extra share value bump instead of my opponent but I couldn't only use it uh, once per decade uh, and these cards are going to going to go in front of you uh, and uh, stay there and except if they have this symbol which means you discard them uh, so this one if instead of tapping it uh, every round you want to keep it for the future you could discard it and choose who gets to go first and that kind of affects the start player decision uh, like this one you would discard and allows you to pretend you have one extra good to sell even if your factory doesn't produce it it's like you have it and you're able to sell it and, and get more income from from just discarding that card uh, the workshop, this one allows you to have discount on the amount uh, you have to pay for your machines. What's nice about this card is this applies to all your factories. You always have two machines that just kind of operate smoothly. You've got like an in-house mechanic that goes to all your factories to kind of uh, keep those machines up and running. And then you've got uh, something like this guy who is going to be attached to a single factory that you choose immediately. The lightning icon and whatever factory you attach it to up to four of the workers in that factory are going to have a, a minus two pound income. They're cheap labor. So you, you've hired friends and family members that want to work for you for volunteer pricing. Uh, these guys down here, they're all kind of the same. Uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's allowing you to um, uh, tap this card to have kind of an extra good 
Now this sounds an awful lot familiar, just like I, what I just said. <laughs> Let me double check. <laughs> Quickly checking. Um, so I get that backwards. Um, any one of the good goods? Oh, it increases the amount of goods that you may sell. So whereas before it, like you have an extra good that you needed to sell this one, um, your difference between you and the demand token maybe was only two, but you, you had three goods that allows you to uh, instead sell all three goods or increases the maximum by one on, on one uh, factory per decade. Again, you would tap it after it's used. It has to be for the specific good depicted. And so there's ones that are, you know, lamps or bread or coats and bread or cutlery and bread or cutlery and coats. And then this one allows you to uh, kind of cheat that upgrading. Uh, you can choose up to two factories that you want to upgrade early. So in fact, in decade one, if you have this development card, you can bump up the uh, to the factories and the workers attached to two of them to decade two in, in decade one or decade three in decade two. So it's kind of like a little uh, looking ahead, uh, getting ahead action. And down here we have an advanced action that has more to do with ignoring decade restrictions uh, for developments. But again, not going into the details of the advanced mode. Uh, a few other things. Uh, you can only have four distribution and four quality on any factory, but um, this uh, allows you to uh, change the quality, uh, quality up to six in any one given factory. And this just goes into your hand and you would use and add it as you would uh, against your development limits to any of your factories, but you could go all the way up to six with this card. The development's uh, distribution does not have that rather, but this uh, gives you extra distribution that you can add, whereas you're pretty limited with the number of cards you had. This would just give you an extra card um, in play, as well as a, this big warehouse that uh, has even more uh, storage. Now I've played this game at two and three and four players. The four players um, storage and shipping and all that had a much bigger effect in a two player game. I didn't find that I did as much storing and shipping. I was able to kind of follow who was going to do what in the market and kind of keep a better eye on it uh, and was not quite as tight in that area, but it was um, nevertheless still a struggle and a puzzle to figure out what to do with my own market. Okay. So you repeat uh, each of those four different rounds and those three different decades. Once you reach the end of the game, uh, you're just going to sell any stored goods that you have and you're going to be able to buy shares with uh, whatever money you have at that point, at your share value. You're going to decrease uh, based on the number of ships you had and the number of loans that you took. Oh my god, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> uh, and now suddenly we're the orange player, but you're going to uh, have uh, decrease on all that and then you're going to multiply those two numbers together and whoever has the highest total is going to be the uh, best entrepreneur and the winner of Arkwright the card game. So I hope uh, that you were able to follow along. Uh, if you have any questions, um, checking in chat, looks like everyone was kind of following along, which is great. Uh, it's on Tabletopia now. You can play two, three, or four players. We've made it free. We know that's uh, kind of important here. Uh, to get into the game, you know, just keeping in mind there's some things that are a little bit trickier in the online interface, uh, but I think Tabletopia has done a pretty good job of helping us implement it in a, a virtual setting and uh, really looking forward to getting this actually in my hands uh, once uh, the Kickstarter is completed. It's been successful, so we're now just working on some stretch goals. Uh, you have, uh, I think, a little less than a little more than 48 hours, a little longer than two days uh, before it ends. So tell your friends, get them to go check it out. And thanks for joining me here today for this run through of uh, Arkwright the card game. All right, thank you. <laughs>